Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. That is why I have got to catch him this time. To show these kids that the example he sets is a first-class ticket to nowhere. Oh, Ed, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. Really? Uh-huh. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay, that's, that's good news. Yeah. So, uh, part of the, uh, these four questions I had for my article was just... Um, D- dive right into them, sure. What is it about the Flat Earth community that has allowed it to develop such a strong um, family, you know, that has... Why, why is it why is why is it taken off as fast as it has and why does it just keep growing and growing growing and why are people so satisfied with the community well uh, two things one is the the reason why it's grown it, it's a combination of reasons but the the big two reasons why it has grown so fast uh, the first is that it's easy to understand meaning, if you take the, the globe model and the solar system model, otherwise known as the heliocentric model, that takes a lot to fully grasp it. Meaning it's not just a standalone globe that's spinning at 1,000 miles an hour and traveling 60,000 miles around, around the sun and the solar system cruising in half a million miles an hour sideways and all that stuff. <coughs> what it's doing, you, you also have to account a lot of geometry, a lot of trig, a lot of calculus, and then get into what quantum physics and all that other fun stuff. Whereas the flat earth is extremely easy to, to, to get your head around. I mean, you're just in a building, uh, a planetary. Uh, it reflects people's experiences, right? The, I'm sorry, what? It, it reflects people's experiences, their life experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's, re- it, and then on top of that, you combine the, it, it reduces the universe down to something that uh, makes the people's lives become meaningful again. You know, if you believe in mainstream science, and I don't know what your major is, and you don't have to tell me, uh, but w- mainstream science says that you're some insignificant speck on a little rock flying through an impossible universe at five different speeds. And, and it's, it, you're nothing that you, you mean nothing in this, in this universe. Whereas the flat earth, you mean a lot. You're extremely significant. You're, you're very special. And I know pe- that's cliche. It's like, well, you're everyone's special. No, I mean, this literally redefines your world to where you have purpose. You have meaning. And this place was built for was built for you. And I'm not exactly uh, putting a name on God. Uh, you know, there's five major religious houses in this world, and they they all seem to have a piece of the puzzle. But you can't have a mo- you can't have a flat Earth model and be an atheist at the same time. Really, really difficult to do. Uh, it, it, and I'm not saying that flat Earth will kill atheism, but it's it's going to reduce. No, its- I, I- coming from you know that's a i'm a sculpture major by the way Ah. (laughs) science is something that i also find a little daunting and that really speaks well to the next point do you think there's anything the scientific community has done wrong that leads people into into these ideas that makes so much more sense to them from a personal angle yes yeah 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 uh scientists science has taken the leap and and i'll the blame really isn't on the scientific method it's on really the corruption of man and women get a pass on this because men are so easily corrupted by power and if knowledge is power you know science it's funny you know you'd think that science would be immune from that but that is not the case they've taken the leap from science to scientism meaning uh, again if you want to tell me the the boiling temperature of water at sea level hey great that's something i can test right now you want to tell me what the core of the earth looks like Oh, don't don't move so fast there because you haven't come anywhere close. I mean, if the if if, if, if the core of the Earth is supposedly four thousand miles down and you've drilled less than ten miles down, why are you showing me diagrams that say, "Oh yeah, this is what the core of the Earth looks like"? And not only the Earth, but Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune and and every other planet you can think of. Uh, and and people see that and all of a sudden they become suspicious and we just throw out stuff at them all the time. Uh, something I'm fond of saying is, can I prove the, the flat earth to you right now? No, of course not. If, if I could, I'd be on the cover of Time magazine. But I can create 
so much reasonable doubt in the globe, the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat Earth model. And yeah, so would you say then that the flat Earth movement isn't so much about the shape of the Earth as it is about the function of our society, the lack of um, tangible evidence or evidence to the people for the scientific community? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, really tied together, though. So, it, it, I mean, it is partially the shape of the Earth, no no question. But it's the, the, the shape of the Earth can't be... That's why there's so many camps in the Flat Earth community. You know, nobody, no, no two groups can totally agree on exactly what the Earth looks like. All they can agree on is that it's not a globe. And... You can't for sure. Yeah, yeah, they don't know, but everyone knows. I mean, again, remember what I said about reasonable doubt in the globe. They can't go back to the globe even if they tried. And some have tried yeah. and they and they failed. So it's this ultimate ulti open-minded experience. And I know that sounds a little kumbaya and and something out of the 60s, you know, where you take psychedelic drugs, but it, part of it okay. has that aspect to it, but you don't need drugs to do it. So, I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, and I know we've had movies that have touched on it in the last 20 years, you know, like the, the 13th floor and the Matrix and, and stuff like that. But those also play into it, too. And it's like, what is the world you're looking at? And should you take the world that is presented to you as at face value? And we have found a way to crack that to where now people are looking at it going, yeah, yeah. And once you're open to flat earth, everything else becomes open. You know, you, you start, I mean, it's again, something I'm fond of saying, I say, do your research and question everything. And now people are questioning things they never, ever would have thought they would have. And most of it's because of flat earth. That's wow. Yeah. Uh, so I guess you could say that, that there's this, I've, I've heard it said a compartmentalization, there's a gatekeeping for the scientific community that, that so the flat earth would have something to offer. The scientific community would not. Sci the scientific community is so regimented, and I shouldn't pick on them too much because you know it's an edu part of the educational system, of course. But what happens is is that you know nowadays it's become like anything; it's become so specialized and so refined that they won't even address this because of the peer pressure in their communities. Meaning, you know, when you when you get your master's degree or higher in any of the physical sciences, uh, you automatically be, par be part of its own community. And you don't want to be ostracized from that community by questioning anything within it. So we have a just a devil of a time trying to get anyone to debate us because you don't want to be that scientific member that no, of course, they'll make statements away from us. But you don't want to be that scientific member that goes up against Flat Earth and doesn't knock them out, to use a boxing reference, in the first round. Because that's what you should be able yeah. to do, right? I mean, flat, flat Earth has been shut down for at least 500 years. So science should be able to come in and just... just I'm sorry, say it again? So you're saying it should be that easy, but it really isn't. It should be that easy, and, the, and it isn't. Uh, a perfect example would be uh, something I ran into last year where uh, there was a, a, a physicist from... Georgetown University, he was supposed to debate me, and, and it was not my idea. It was a uh, German television team, and they said, okay, we will do this to where you guys aren't talking to each other directly. What you're going to do is you're going to record five questions on video. We will send him that video. He will record his responses, and we'll just be the messenger back and forth. And they said, you start. You come up with five questions. And so I came up with five relatively simple questions for him. Sent it off, and that was it. He folded like a card table, and the debate never, ever happened. And th that, that sort of thing occurs from time to time with us. We, ha we just cannot get anyone from the flat. Because they know. I, because f science is so specialized that they don't, mm -hmm. they, they can't step out, even if they wanted to. They can't step out, their, out of their own boundaries, out of the lines, to address us on other points. And we hit them with a shotgun pattern approach. You know, we hit them with, I don't know, 15 different facets. And yeah, they might be able to address two or three of them. But if you have the le the other nine, 10, whatever it is, lay lying out there, what do you think the public's going to do? The public's going to all of a sudden look at science like, uh, why, why can't you address these things? And so, yeah, they have a, a really, really horrible time with it. So what do you think, but besides the despecialization and actually making outreach, what could science do better? To, to accommodate everyone the uh, 
well, I, I know what they could do better, but they won't do it, which is, and I've, I've said this now several times because, look, I like a fair fight, and we're crushing them right now, which is, uh, they've made science not accessible to the common man. Meaning, uh, you've, back in the day, I know this is before your time, but you, have, you ever heard of a thing called Schoolhouse Rock? Remember that? Yeah, I love Schoolhouse Rock. Perfect. Schoolhouse Rock. S- Schoolhouse Rock was a trick of the education system. Not necessarily science, but the education system to trick kids into learning by entertaining them while giving them lessons. And that yeah. dropped, and that was like in the seventies, right? Seventies and early eighties, and then that dropped off. And of course, it's in syndication, but they really stopped doing that. They stopped making science easy. By remember what I said about being specialized. So now, what's happened is they have uh, everything so specialized. They've now all they do is put on the lab coats and say, "Leave science to the scientists. Leave science to the nerds." You know, Re- Revenge of the Nerds was an interesting movie because there was only one nerd house. Right. And the rest yeah. of the houses were everybody else. So what does that tell you? It means that, you know, things have never changed, which is the people that, again, no offense if you're part of these, the people that were part of the math club and the chess club and the audio visual club and all these other fringe clubs were such a minority. They were the ones that ended up doing uh, the research out there. And when they did. Think that the minority helps in doing helps in accomplishing that research goal. I might say it one more time. The, the, the fact that the Flyer community is a minority aids in its um, accomplishment of this research. Well, yes. Movement. Yes, but 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 the difference is the flat Earth community. The flat Earth community now can appeal to anyone on the street. We've hit just about every demographic you can think of. Everyone from blue collar factory to a list celebrities, people because it's wow. an because it's an interesting story. Meaning when when you tell think of think of it this way when you're and I again I can't speak for you but when you're out there talking with people you know when you when you're meeting somebody on the street and yeah you talk about the weather and you talk about sports and you talk about but usually towards the end of the conversation one of the either one or both of you will bring up some interesting story something interesting yeah I heard that Alec Baldwin got arrested the other day hey I heard that you know if you eat more chocolate you could cure you know have less chance of cancer something like that right some little story well flat earth is like the the trump card of stories it's like oh yeah by the way I saw this thing on the internet earth might actually be flat you would be amazed the the polarization that that thing creates that one particular topic i don't care if you're talking about uh rights for a particular demographic or abortion or stem cell research or white slavery take your pick nothing is as polarizing as flat earth and so we can get into areas now and we have been for for three years that i i never would have really thought possible and the, the the documentary which you're going to end up seeing here uh i've gone to several film festivals you know this was like the first documentary that was made by by an la team and we did 22 film festivals in seven countries and the festival showings that i went to different parts of the country in canada it all ended up the same way which is you had you know most of the audience was not flat earthers by the end of that the end of that film hands were up you know question and answer period people were just had question after question after question because th- all of a sudden you know after the first 30 minutes they realized wait a minute this is serious this is actually this is something that's actually spreading out there kind of like what you ran into if you don't mind me asking by the way how how did you um how did you run into me okay so i'm taking a a class that's linked with an astronomy class it's a writing class Oh. And we were thinking about alternative approaches to skepticism. Yeah. And the topic of flat earthers came up and people wanted to write about it. And so I learned through a number of um, online sources that, that your videos, Flat Earth Clues, yeah. are some of the most widely respected and accepted sources within the flat earth community. Gotcha. And I, I watched them and they, they were so different in their nature from a lot of um, like other formal scientific documentaries that I was fascinated. I was wondering, what is it about these videos that makes them so popular, that makes them so easy to listen to, that makes them so easy to process and and so intriguing to people? Because they are very popular. Well, and, and, th- and, um, and yeah, and thank you for yeah. that. Thank you for that. Um, 
it was kind of a mystery to me when you know when I put him out. Uh, and again, you'll find out when you when you listen to the documentary. Um, when I put him out, I honestly didn't know what the reception might be. It was like turning in a, a blue book, right? That you thought you would yeah. ace. You, you thought it's like, oh, I, I, I got it. But I, I, there's some nagging feeling in the back of your head going, man, what if I messed up? But I had spent the better part of nine months sitting on this thing and mulling over just about every question I would ask myself. It was like, you know, when you, when you play chess against yourself, you keep turning the board around and around and around. And I'm going, okay, I think I've got it. I think I, and so when I made the video, it was more of a, a question to the internet hive mind. It's like, without asking the question, it was, okay, I can't prove the globe anymore. Tell me how I'm wrong. And here's what I have. Here's my, here's my evidence. And, and, you know, left my phone number out there and my email. Honestly thought that in the first couple months, I would get somebody that would call me and shut the whole thing down. Some, some academic would say, okay, here's where you went wrong. This is absolutely not, this particular thing is absolutely not correct. You can just shut down your YouTube channel and go home. And the opposite happened. People started calling me and people wanted to interview me. And then the subject matter experts started calling me from different aspects of the military and pilots and engineers. And they wow. all said, they all said the same thing, which was, yeah, yeah. We've heard about the curvature of the earth. We've heard about the rotation of the earth. But the math, we don't use it. It's, it does, it's not there. Meaning we, we've heard of it, but we never ever use it in our everyday lives. And I thought, and, and nobody to this day from any professional field has ever contacted me to refute that. And I thought, I was going, okay, uh, where do I go from here? And then next thing you know, more and more channels started getting made. And, and uh, I mean, there, you know, I didn't invent Flat Earth, obviously. But I ended up becoming well, the... You're, you're a pioneer, I think. You're, well, you're a teacherhead to a lot of people. If, if Flat Earth, and I'll, I'll use it because you're at university. If Flat Earth was a university, I would be the freshman recruiter at this point. I get them in the door. I think that's a great analogy. So you were talking before about, about the, the common man and how, again, these no one does the math in their daily life. That's why if you ask the average person to prove that the Earth is a globe, they might struggle for a little bit to to. to um, Oh, it's it's because it, we don't we don't know that. So, it, what is it about your video and and its production that makes? I know that you have a very conversational tone. There's a lot of graphics and memes and things throughout it. Do you think that and what what else? Would so, some, of it, some, of it, some of it, some of it, some of it's subliminal. Uh, some of it is my delivery. I was trained in customer I, I did high level high stress customer ser phone work for customer service for the better part of 20 years and oh. oh yeah that was that was what i did uh for for um a time and attendance software out in uh, boulder colorado and i when i was doing that you know I, I, you got used to calming people down and delivering something that's like okay we got this don't worry the sun's gonna come up tomorrow here's what we have to do. And yeah. that particular tone kind of carried over with me. And it didn't matter what topic it was. You learned that no matter what it, you were dealing with, all you had to do was address it calmly, rationally, uh, and, you know, with conviction. And, and I'm a big believer. I can, I can, I have conviction in things that I believe in. Like, you know, you, you say, oh, you should have done sales. Like, no, 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 I can't sell you snake oil. But I can sell you something I really, really believe in. You ask me to endorse this particular product or this particular product, I've got to actually use it for me to endorse it. And so when I finally got into Flat Earth, I absolutely positively believe it. I mean, it's, it's, it's no joke because I can't, I can't prove the other side of it. Meaning, I'm, I'm not kidding. I can't. I started out like everybody else. I hated Flat Earth. Just hated. I used to collect. I mean, I'm, I still have, I, I think, a few lying around here. I used to collect antique globes. That was one of my little hobbies. I have weird hobbies. Like I used to collect bookends and trinkets and I had maps all over the walls. I was a huge map wow. fan. And so when this came along, I mean, I was literally like banging my head on the keyboard going, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. And you do that long enough, eventually you stare at it in frustration. You go through the five stages of acceptance and you finally hit that end. And it's like, you know what? Maybe it's not that crazy. And that's where I went the other way. That's again, that's why I went the other way when I made the series of videos. I just 
laid them out. And honestly, I did not know, uh, I'm not going to call it divine intervention or anything like that, but I wasn't kidding. And again, you'll see it in the documentary. Um, I woke up in the middle of, did you ever see the movie Jerry Maguire? No. Okay. That's right. So I woke up in the middle of the night and had this moment of clarity, which was, okay, I can't disprove flat earth anymore. It was easier. The, 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 the scales had tipped to where it was easier for me to explain flat earth than it was the globe. And that was exciting. That was like, wait a minute. And then you start, it starts picking up steam and it starts, you know, it starts snowballing. And that's what everybody that I talk to, they run into is that they, they the same i hear the same story over and over which is they try to debunk it they realize they can't and then it's more it's more fun to go the other way it's okay maybe it's flat and then once they go flat usually it takes them about two weeks uh, i've seen women turn in less than an hour but with men it's a little harder after about yeah. two weeks they they flip and then they then they it's like they try to tell other people and it, and it spreads uh like a like a virus which is really strange, but it's true. So what, what could the scientific community learn from the style of your videos, which are so different from a lot of, you know, if you look up documentaries about why the earth is round, it's got a very different format from your video. Um, but if, if oh, really I know I can give, I can give you ammunition. I mean, I don't mind saying it because I've tried to tell the, the scientific community this anyway, and that is you've got to remember who the what you're who you're talking to on the streets meaning you and i'm not saying i'm not using the word dumb it down because i think that's somewhat insulting uh people are smart people know a lot of stuff but we've given them so much junk food media for lack of a better term that they they're memorizing all the stuff that that's entertainment based so if you ask somebody on the you know around campus right now it's like okay name me six quarterbacks with decent ratings uh, tell me who's, who's, who the top five finalists on The Voice. Tell me who the Kardashians are married to. You know, you can give them pop culture references all day long and they'll get that. Why did they memorize those things instead of scientific facts or scientific theories? And that's because, well, people, they don't want to learn. They want to be entertained. And that's what science has forgotten. It, science, it's, it's, science now is more boring than ever. And so they, they, they've lost their audience. And I'll give you a perfect example. I'll give you a perfect example of this, which is I knew that flat earth was going to take off like a, like a forest fire after the curvature of the earth was brought into play around the end of 2015, which was this. If I ask, and I, and I'm, I'm, I won't tell you because you may know, but, but I didn't address this in the videos. If, if I go to the average person and I say, just pull anybody off the street and you can, you can do this with anybody in campus. And I say, okay, the curvature of the earth, you could ask them what it is. They're not going to know. But if you say, but if you tell them, you say your curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile and they're totally getting that, right? They're like, yeah, I'm totally on board with this man. Then I go squared. They all glaze over. They have no idea what that means. You may not even know exactly what that means. What it means. I can't, I can't imagine that. It's eight inches per mile per mile, which is take it, whatever the distance is, like say it's a uh, five miles, right? That's five times five is 25 times eight inches. And the same thing, 10 miles, 10 times 10, and 20 miles, 20 times 20, times eight. And you just goes more and more and more and more. And because it's, and it's got to be squared because it, it, if, it's a, it's, if it's a sphere, then it's gonna eventually go vertical. It can't be just eight inches per mile because that's a slope. That's just stairs. You know, stairs is like one foot per step. So if people don't, you're saying, okay, where are you going with this? My point is, is that people, that's basic algebra right? That's, that's not even really hard algebra. If the, if 99% yeah. of the people walking on the sidewalks don't know that, then how in the world is science going to be able to defend the globe with geometry and trig and calculus and God forbid quantum physics? They aren't, they can't. You, if you're telling, if you're, t and, pe and I, I told them this time and time again, I said, look, science, you cannot beat flat earth with math because people don't like math. They hate math. You're going to have to, you, you're going to have to make math for a little play on words here for the lowest common denominator. You're going to have to make math for the people on the street and they don't want to do that because it's beneath them. It's like, well, they should study more. They should know this by now. Well, that's why I have a PhD and they don't. It's like, yeah, but we're the ones that are grabbing those people. We're, we, we're, yeah, we're, we're grabbing them in by the, 
Abhi say it again. The majority of the population decides what the truth is, really. Right. Right. Again, it's, it's, look, I, people, it, I, again, people under, people pick the easiest route. And that, remember what I, when I said before, when I said that flat earth is easier to understand than the globe. And, and what I meant by that is, uh, there's an old, old book, a uh, Chinese book called the, uh, the art of war. And there's a, there's a great little passage in there. Probably one of the only things I ever took from that book, which is people are like water. They will always take the path of least resistance always. And it's, that's kind of a nice way of saying that people are lazy and they are Look, people are lazy all, all day long, but that happens. I mean, if the, the cell phone thing would be a perfect example, we talked on the phone for the better part of a hundred years. And then all of a sudden you gave people the, the ability to text. Now, is texting physically easier than hitting one button and calling people on speed dial? No, it's not. But it's emotionally easier by a long shot. You know, people have entire relationships based on what they're texting to each other on the phone. The point is, is people took, took that route because it's easier. People are taking flat earth because it's easier. It's Even easier. though, and, and your video is so popular because in a way it's familiar. I remember... In Flat Earth introduction, you say, let's have a men in black history lesson, right? That, right. That's something people know. Right. I, oh, yeah. Well, I'm, then, I'm a huge believer in pop culture references. People know, I mean, how many, good Lord. I mean, everybody uses movie quotes and television quotes all day long when they're talking to everybody nowadays or some sort of meme yeah. or something they saw on YouTube. Uh, you know, it's all about pop culture references. And so I throw those in every once in a while, but they're relevant. I don't, I don't pull, I don't throw them in uh, just because I think they're clever. Uh, it's because the, just about everything, sorry, siren in the background, the, um, just, just about everything you can think of now has been said in some sort of media. There's, there's an old saying, which is there's nothing new under the sun. And that's true. And when I have conversations with people and as they're talking to me, they're saying things and I'm going up, oh, yep, that movie, that television show, that movie, you know, I can, I, I've absorbed what probably way too much at this point. Sorry. Anyway, go ahead. I ramble. Oh, no, I, I think you have some great points. And so I'm, I'm wondering if science wanted to compete with, with your pop culture references and your, how, how would they do that? Could they do that? Could, for example, I don't know, PBS, Eon, use those types of familiar sure pop icons sure so they sure, sure. They, 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 the people. they could uh but it would take well, uh, but who but they? who would, but who exactly is going to do it like for example um not not that i want to give the guy credit because it wasn't his his idea which was um look at the two biggest uh science icons in the united states one is neil degrasse tyson uh, who, yeah. who, who really, I mean, he's more of a stand up act than anything else. He just goes around to, to various uh, universities and he goes on stage and he talks about stuff. Um, and yeah. he, he's basically, a, I don't want to, I, I'll pick on him a little bit here. I call him the, uh, uh, the, the Jack in the box of science. You just crank him, crank up the handle and he pops out and says, you know, space is amazing. That's all he does. Bill <laughs> Nye. Bill Nye was a was the closest thing that science ever had to getting a sort of a foothold, and he actually did pretty well. I mean, considering the guy only had a bachelor's degree in mechanical, uh, yeah, he, he did a a little skit up in Seattle called the Science Guy, and then Disney decided to franchise it and ran it for I think five years, maybe six, and then it started, then it was syndicated, and yeah, so now Bill Nye is invited to a lot of things, and he's an advisor to a lot of things, but it's pretty dated. And he only talks about so many soft topics. And I know he's got a new show on Netflix called uh, Bill Nye Saves the World, but honestly, it's more politically motivated than anything and it's else. Had mixed ratings. The what? It's had very mixed ratings. Very mixed ratings, yes. Well, I mean, it's, they're introducing topics that don't really have much to do with with uh, straight up straight up science, and I don't want to be offensive to anybody. But anyway, so you'd have to create a whole, you, you want the competition, what science have to do, you'd have to create a whole new battery of shows along those lines. And you'd have to create brand new scientific icon people to go along with them. And that is no small task because one, uh, who, who's, who's going to be the people that are going to, you're going to build up into these, these icons because now there's so much media 
I, there's such a huge amount of choices of media that's out there between television and movies and internet and just you, you, oh my I mean social media alone has lifetimes worth of content out there so you're gonna have to try to yeah. break into that market again plus you're gonna have to agree on exactly the messages you're pushing and then who's gonna pay for it you know who who's 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 gonna be backing this thing the closest thing they have right now honestly the old the, their last line of defense at the moment is NASA NASA is there and and NASA runs space stories ever since we started uh you know getting the ball rolling on our side a little plan words there once we started moving forward NASA started releasing their space stories every the the pace quickened to where it was every, first it was a couple times a month then it was a couple times a week now it's every day Every day there's some sort of space story that's out there and that is deliberate on their part to where, you know, they don't care. They don't even care if you read the article. All they care about is, did you look at the headline and did you glance at the image? That's all they care about. It doesn't matter what the story well, is. Well, that's where they get ad revenue, really. The what? For a lot of they make money that way. Yeah, they make some money, but remember the the uh, NASA gets $52 million a day from the government. I mean, it's, it, it is... Yeah, but the National Oceanographic and Aviation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's... They, if they had NASA's budget for one year, they could run their systems for 64 years. Oh, yeah. And that's why we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about our own oceans. Right. Right. And, it's well, that, that's, that's, the, that's, the that's, that's, a, that's at least the perceived uh, surface of Mars. With the with the yeah. impossible the impossible rovers that run on batteries that don't make any sense, and of course are trying to generate images using a power supply that, yeah, don't get me started on NASA rover. It's, yeah, it's, so that, that, that's another topic for another day. But regardless, just pushing aside completely whether or not the flat Earth is what the truth out there. Right. It it gained a huge huge amount of support lately. Oh yeah, and yeah. We that, that is because. It has what science doesn't. It has something that's very appealing to the the common the common man. It it sparks the imagination. It gives a feeling of community. It's not negative in any way. That's what makes it difference than the different than just about any other conspiracy. Uh, just about every other conspiracy you can think of is dark. You know, it's like Heath Ledger, Batman, dark. You know, you're talking about nine yeah. eleven or Boston bombing or Sandy Hook or Pearl Harbor or. or the, Area 51 or whatever, it's got some dark, sinister X-Files thing to it. Whereas Flat Earth is really got a cool thing. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, it's a brand new world. And people get charged up about it to where, uh, I'll give you a perfect example, was when we started this, at the beginning of 2015, when you searched for Flat Earth stuff in, in YouTube, you came back maybe with 50,000 relevant search results. In the middle of last year, we were about 20, almost 21 million. We had just passed uh, Donald Trump. Wow. Yeah. And then they tore down the scoreboard, meaning they, the search results, uh, the search result metrics were removed for all topics for, for YouTube for all time. And it's like, what? <laughs> what happened? That's I mean, pretty crappy. well, I you mean, know? I get it. But remember, the only people ahead of us once we got to that point were, I don't know, little people like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, guys like that. So, and Justin B. And I, like you, are actually, I'm, I'm from the San Juan Island up in that corner of Washington. Oh, you are? And growing up. I am from Shaw Island, the smallest of the San Juan Islands. We, I went to Shaw Island. Oh, we, my family had property on Shaw Island up until I don't know about ten years ago. No way. Yeah, I'm not. I couldn't so make that up. I couldn't make that up. If we tried. No, well, I'm life. I'm lifelong would be. Uh, I was. I was born here and raised here. Up and and. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Are you kidding? In fact, I I spent a year up in uh, uh, Victoria. Uh, just uh, just. I went to high school there. You Victoria want... is beautiful, it's a beautiful city, but you know, something that I always thought as a kid, looking out on the water, because we had waterfront, was that we lived in a dome. You can see the way the sky comes down over the water, and the way the water flattens out to the horizon, and that's what I firmly believed until I went to school. Well, and, and you would not be alone. you got to remember that before the whole Copernicus thing, and, and I just love the fact, by the way, uh, another tip for science is uh, not have scientists try to insult anybody in the flyers community because that just fuels us even more. So when Brian Cox, you've heard of him, 
when Brian Cox from the UK, you know, the, the Brit- British version of um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, when he came, came yeah. out, he came out last year and said that Flat Earth was actually a myth, that nobody ever believed in Flat Earth. It was just one of those things that have been passed down. It's like, uh, what are you talking about? You mean, oh, I mean, other than the, the Inca and the Mayan and the Hopi and the Hebrew and the Egyptian and the Norse and just about everybody thought that one point that because that again that's what you see which is you know if you're looking up the question is when you're looking up at night and especially if you look at time lapse that's when it really freaks you out are the stars moving or are you moving that's it's it has to be one of the two and science 500 years ago said well you know what we're moving it's not the stars that are moving before that everybody says you know what the sky is moving we're stationary and that changes everything when if that's the case okay well then it's not a, a dome you know, then, then all the planets, there's planets in the solar system and galaxy and a universe around us. But before that, everybody just observed the same thing. And it was kind of like, um, again, pop culture reference, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind movie, where everybody drew, you know, all these people drew the, the Devil's Tower. They all drew the same thing. They all had that same vision. And, you know, it, all the, it was funny because the scientists were saying, no, you guys are all wrong. There's nothing happening there. It's like, really? So, sorry. Anyway, I rambled. That's so weird about Shaw. No, Wait a minute. You went, I'm sorry. You went to high school in Vic? In Victoria, yeah. I'll be damned. I went to an all-girls school named St. Margaret. I'll be damned. Yeah, I spent... And I'm I, back in Seattle, but I, I was just um, calling because I, I, you've given me such great answers to these questions. I wanted to learn what it was about your video that made it so revolutionary to so many people. It... Um, and I, I think that you pointed out that we see the earth with our eyes in, in our field of vision as somewhat flat. And we see these pop culture references and what we don't see is what's happening in the lab. So what we don't see is the core of the earth. Right. And so you brought that into your video with, with those, those pop references and with, with your, your tone, you know, because if you, if you watch a, a documentary of any kind about um, current environmental science, right. it has a very austere, serious feel to it. And I think something about your videos is very accommodating. It's very friendly, but, but also there is rhetoric. It's very rational, but it's not harsh. No, no, no. And I also give, a, I give an out at the end. That, that was something that uh, I didn't mean to do necessarily, which was I, I say, okay, here's what I'm presenting. This is what, you know, this is what I see. I see this, I see this, and I see this. But at the end of any particular segment, I say, you know what? without saying it it's like hey you know what don't take my word for it don't believe me just do your own research ask questions but another talking thing is, is that when you watch those documentaries it says okay this is from the california institute of technology and that's all it says at the end of your video it says this is who i am if you have any questions call me right i was floored <laughs> i thought wow this is someone who's actually willing to talk about it because you know if, if you really want to know when you watch a scientific documentary, it's very, very hard to reach those people. You're absolutely right. Uh, and, well, especially on the Internet. It's weird. They call it the, the social media, but there's a lot of aspects that aren't very social at all. People, you know, hide hide behind names and avatars. But with me, I honestly wanted to have questions answered as much as the next guy. I wanted a dialogue. I wanted to know. I took my research about as far as I could in those first nine months. And then I was really just asking everybody, it's like, okay, what else you got out there? You know, what else is, and what was strange was people were calling me up and saying, this word just floored me. They were calling up and saying, heck, not only do I believe in what you say, I got a whole nother set of things you should look at. And the first thing, like if you, the, the clue is, you know, I, I again, I'm not going to take credit for this. The clues never talked about anyone going to the beach and looking at the horizon with digital cameras. And that was like the first thing people started doing. People started going to the beach in droves and using HD technology with digital zoom and started cranking in on boats. And then they start calling me up going, no, no, dude, there's no curve at all. There's no, there isn't a stitch of curve. I mean, yeah, of course, you know, there's valleys and, and mountains and stuff like that. But when you look over the water, there's no curve. And I'm going, really? They go, yeah, 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 look at this video. And then people started making more and more videos and they started bringing lasers out and using drones. And, and it's like, really? 
And so, yeah, people kept kept again. That's the the university um, analogy where people just started branching off and doing all these different things. People started attacking NASA way more than I in different aspects. I never would have thought of. And uh, so, so I hope if you're in the scientific community, Neil deGrasse Tyson has to be your spokesperson. No one else is allowed to go and talk to professionals. If you're a flat earther, do you think you get to become the professional on what you believe? Do you think that's part of the appeal? Part of it, yeah, the- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a system. It's weird because people say it. They, some people, well, in the beginning, people say there's no leaders in flat Earth, and that's not true. I mean, this is not Occupy Wall Street, right? And and but what it's interesting is based on merit. Meaning, uh, if you make content, so if you get inspired by Flat Earth, and I've seen it time and time and time again, it's really cool to watch. People will say, you know what, I'm going to make a series of videos. And not necessarily based on my stuff, they just, I'm going to make a series of videos. And they put it out on their channel, and all of a sudden they get 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, and so on, uh, subscribers. And all of a sudden they start moving up in the ranks. And people see that. I mean, like one of the big channels out there, Jaronism. He was fond of saying that when he watched my stuff and he knew that I was making, you know, the videos with a really simple editor, he goes, well, heck, if, if that guy can make them, I can absolutely make this. And his channel, I think, is twice as big as mine. And uh, he's and he, he, he does all these live streams and people, people and in, well, inspiration sparks other inspiration. And so people, the the hype, people, the, the flat earth message just keeps getting refueled and refueled and, and kept getting sucked back into the engine to where the engine just keeps getting bigger and bigger and uh, yeah people go ahead the, the, that, that type of editor you use that very basic editor yeah is another thing to contribute because people say i could do this myself this person did it themselves oh yeah i i can believe them that very high production kind of makes you wonder there's so many people behind it. There's so many things you don't know that are going on. Right. What else could they, how could they alter your perception of it? When you have that extremely simple form in your video, do you think that is something that makes people want to believe you? Yes. Yes. It, you're right. There is, there's just enough, uh, there's just enough polish on it that it, that it doesn't come off as clunky. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't come off as a $150 Hollywood, uh, I'm sorry, $150, $150 million Hollywood movie. Um, it comes off as like an indie movie where, where you can tell, it's like, yeah, you can tell he was on a budget, but, but the movie still was pretty cool. Everyone knows their, you know, their favorite indie movies that cost, didn't cost much to make, but they were still really cool. It still comes down to, some of the best movies still come down to uh, the story. And, you know, it's not about necessarily the effects. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could have spent some time and, and, and thrown a whole bunch of flashy things and hired and subcontracted out some of the work and, and done stuff. But there was no need. The, the whole point was the message. And that was the best part because Flat Earth is something that can even jump. And I've seen it again uh, time and time where it jumps outside of the Internet where people are, are, you know, the street activism has nothing. You know, people are doing street activism for Flat Earth. They're not holding up tablets. They're just, they're just telling the story. When you get to that far, when you're just telling word of mouth, like physically, just then you're talking about something that's, that's, that's millennia traditional old, meaning, you know, when people used to trade stories over campfires, that's where it's, that's where flat earth. I mean, you could shut down the internet today and flat earth is still going. Uh, it, which is weird, you know, so when Google came out just a couple of days ago and said that they were going to try to curb our enthusiasm by not recommending some of our videos that much, honestly, when I saw it, it's like, yeah, well, <laughs> thanks for that, but you gave us a three-year head start, so you're not going to be, a, we're, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, really? no worries at all. This, you know, I, I just, I feel so fortunate, you know, I'm writing this article about flat earthers, everyone into my class. But just not been able to reach you. There's this transparency that, again, I think the scientific community needs to work on. What, you, so I can say my paper, yeah. You are very. I, I am not only writing this paper from research. I, I contacted the guy, you know, the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, and now I have this every, firsthand. Uh, every once, yeah. every once in a while, believe it or not, I don't answer a lot of my phone calls, but in I try to answer, especially from students. Uh, like for example, I, on Tuesday, I'm doing, uh, UC Irvine down in, down in California and everyone's, but yeah, when a university student calls me, 
uh, I generally will call them back because I, I think it's really important. And uh, if you want to look up two, okay, so two things, but I know you gotta, you don't want to stay on too long. Uh, two things you want to look up. Uh, one would be, because yeah. this is really relevant to, your, to whatever you're doing, and that is look up the u.gov survey. Type in u.gov, okay. u.gov flat earth. That was a survey that was done in, in uh, I think at the end of 2017. And okay. what it's a British research company that decided they were going to call 10,000 Americans because they were curious about this flat earth thing and asked them, hey, what's going on? And for the most part, their numbers really, really didn't surprise them until they got to the 18 to 24 year olds, which I'm assuming you're in. And when they got to the 18 to 24 year olds, uh, only two thirds of them were believing the globe. A full third were leaning on our side of the fence. And that was way beyond, wow. the, way beyond the deviation. And it freaked out a lot of scientists, including National Geographic, who ended up contacting me and said, yeah, we're, we want to know what's going on with this U.gov survey. We want to talk to you. We want to spin this in a particular direction. And they did. You know, they, they made us into the villains, which is fine. Um, that's, that's the first thing you should, you should look at. Um, the other thing, if, do you have the ability to check your email while you're talking to me? Yes, I do. And I see you've sent me something. Perfect. Download that when you get a chance and, uh, have fun with it. You'll, you will understand so okay. much more. Plus, plus a lot of that was shot, uh, in the, in the Northwest. So you'll totally appreciate it. And I can see where you feel that, that responsibility to contact these students, because when you think about it. Those are the people that are going to be populating here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, again. I didn't. Inv I didn't want to do this. I, I, I. Not only did I not invent flat Earth, I didn't want to be. <laughs> I didn't want to be anywhere near it. Flat Earth is a silly, silly thing, until you, uh, until you believe in it, and then all of a sudden it's not. I mean, people. Uh, let me end with this. People go through the the five stages of acceptance. You know, denial, anger, bargaining, gre uh, depression, and then finally acceptance. Telling yeah. telling people about flat Earth is like telling somebody when they're I don't know thirty or oh, your age maybe oh yeah by the way I'm pretty sure you're adopted and 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 first adopted. yeah your first your first and if you're adopted no offense and all of a sudden all of a sudden <laughs> how did you know what no 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 <laughs> I was really shocked right now. Like, what? wait you are adopted yeah I, well I'm technically a ward of um the state. Now, oh, no, 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 that's fine. Well, okay, imagine though, imagine you, you've seen, oh, that's, that's weird. So imagine movies and televisions where, where people find out they're adopted. They freak out, right? They, and they, they go denial, denial. It's like, no, no. It's, they, they, it's like that. Flat Earth doesn't mean anything to you. You know, they say, well, I'm still going to have my terrible job in the morning. My kids hate me and my spouse doesn't listen to me. It doesn't mean anything to you until you start believing it. And then it means everything. That's where the things change. It's like it doesn't affect your life until you believe it, and then it will affect your life. People that say, no, it doesn't. So so what? It doesn't mean so anything. Science. Sorry, go ahead. So, so science has just these facts that are thrown at you. Flat Earth has the belief. Do you think that's the difference? Science has, well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but that's just it. When science jumped, when they started making assumptions about things, what's the difference between that and belief? When they're telling you about the core of the, the earth, they're saying, well, we believe the core of the earth is this. We believe, and you want to go out into the fringe stuff, we believe there's dark matter and dark energy. We believe in the Big Bang Theory and evolution and carbon dating. And we believe, every, you know, they put their rubber stamp on things. And it, I'm not going to say it was a complete abuse of power, but it's a slippery slope. So because they, they meet, science realized, it's like, you know what? The people on the street, they're going to believe us. They're going to they're gonna believe in the lab coats. They're going to believe us. So why don't we, you know, let's just take some liberties here and there. They created really their own religion, even though, which is ironic since the, you know, there's such odds with normal religions. What's the difference between a scientific theory and a religious theory? Not that much. So anyway. So. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. If I... you, if you need anything else, let me know. Um, uh, if you need any resources, if you want me to point you in any directions, or if you want, if you need anyone else to talk to, just just buzz me and I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I'll definitely, definitely, you know. And um, good luck in California this Tuesday. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.